I want to illustrate some of the subtleties of statistical logic with a real legal case. The subtleties are not at all mathematical. In fact, as we'll see, the mathematics is very simple indeed. The subtlety is knowing what mathematics to do and not being misled by tempting but utterly fallacious arguments. The case is uh, of a suspect called Dennis John Adams, who uh, was arrested for a certain crime, and it was found on checking against the DNA database that his DNA matched that from uh, an unsolved crime of a few years before of sexual assault, and he was convicted of this sexual assault, on the basis largely of the DNA evidence. The case went something like this. There is a DNA profile taken from the scene of the crime. There is a DNA profile taken from the suspect, Adams. It happens that they match identically in all the places where they're examined. Uh, I point out that this isn't everywhere, we're not doing a whole genome analysis, but the forensic DNA profiles look at certain special parts of the your DNA genome. Now, any particular DNA is rare. So this particular profile was rare, and using genetic understanding and figures collected by forensic laboratories, it can be calculated that the frequency of this particular profile in the population at large could be estimated as something like 1 in 2 million. Very small number. Now, it's a very small number, and that means that the probability that if an innocent man uh, was, was on trial and somebody else was truly the perpetrator, then, that, then the probability that that innocent man would actually match and this case would have come to court is only 1 in 2 million. That sounds like such a small probability that we ignore the fact, completely dismiss the possibility that in this case it happened, and consequently deduce that the suspect, Adams, was guilty of the crime as charged. Is this right? Even if we understand that there is some uncertainty over DNA profiles, still one in two million sounds small enough to be completely ignorable. Surely that's the case. Yes or no? Is the probability that he was innocent one in two million, as it's all tempting to believe? Well, we have to take other evidence into account. In particular, in this case, there was no other evidence whatsoever against him, nothing to link him to the scene of the crime, merely the DNA profile. Let's take that seriously. There was nothing to link him to the scene of the crime. That surely is evidence in favor of his innocence. Now, we can suggest that Perhaps in the neighborhood of the crime, there were 150,000 or so red-blooded males who might have possibly been culprits. Um, let's expand that to, say, 200,000 to allow for other people to come in or out of the area. And let's assess a ballpark figure, one in 200,000, that this person, against whom there was originally no other evidence whatsoever, was in fact the culprit, because if there's no other evidence, he's no more nor less likely than anybody else in the population of 200,000 to be the culprit. That is quite strong evidence for his innocence, even not taking account of any other aspects. But then we have the DNA evidence. Let's see, how can we rationally put those two pieces of information together?